This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen The Lair of the White Worm, a British fantasy horror comedy from director Ken Russell made back in 1988. Based on a Bram Stoker novel that I've never read, the movie follows two sisters, Mary and Eve, who run a bed and breakfast in the countryside as well as their patron, Angus, an archaeologist who is excavating their land and uncovers an old convent, unearthing a giant skull in the process. Local myth suggests it belongs to the White Worm, a snake-like creature once worshipped as a god and supposedly slain by the ancestor of a local lord named James. However, When the skull is stolen and one of the sisters experiences strange visions, they come to find that there may be more truth than legend, and that the worm still lives in a mountain cavern nearby. Perhaps worse, an immortal priestess disguised as a woman named Lady Sylvia may be lurking in the areas in the hopes of finding a human sacrifice for the worm and she may just have her eyes set on the sisters. I call it a comedy, but the film could be considered more campy or tongue-in-cheek than outright comedic or even horrific. Sure, there are indeed plenty of scary images, but the film is a lot lighter in its overall tone, almost bordering on being a contemporary B-movie in a way. It isn't so much self-aware or metatextual in this sense, but more that it prefers to have fun with its own story, foregoing any real sense of dread and focusing more on the increasing stakes, as well as character performances. That's not to say that everybody is absolutely bonkers, but they are definitely more singular in their personalities and seem more made to fulfill whatever roles are necessary for the story. And from there, they seem to do whatever they need to bring out the underlying campiness. In this regard, Sylvia is definitely the peak, as she oozes a silly, vampish amount of sexuality in everything she says and does. There is quite an amount of this sexual theme throughout the story, but it's less metaphorical or commentative, and more literal and symbolic instead. I mean, white worm aside. It's really in this symbolism and the ritualistic aspects of the myth that the horror comes through. Again, for sometimes obvious and exaggerated reasons, all of which leads me back around to look at the whole film as an homage of sorts to older films that would exaggerate the actual danger that characters might face. Decades later, the budget finally matches the imagination. Speaking of budget, the movie is certainly well produced. Much of the film is shot on location, or at least on convincing set pieces, with the camera making good coverage of these areas, especially when it comes to large expanses, such as the Worm's alleged home cavern or other outdoor locations in the countryside. Cinematography in general is focused on coverage, with the camera framed most of the time to get a full picture before delving into other close-ups, some of which play up the sexual aspects of a scene. There's also a great amount of special effects work, much of which contrasts the otherwise sillier tone of the film with gruesome injuries and otherworldly and monstrous designs, and are really what puts the film within the horror genre, besides the other story elements. The color choices round out the overall visual style, with large swaths of colors that not only help contrast between the natural world and the mythical, but come through almost like a comic book or some other illustration. It's a bit hard to explain without visual references, but I don't want to get snagged by some kind of copyright bot. In any case, 
overall, I feel that the movie does an excellent job of capturing the sort of imagination that would go into this sorry idea, as well as ensuring that it has some contemporary standing that makes it as unusual and frightening now as it might have been even decades before it was actually released. The Layer of the White Worm Ken Russell, 1988 Four stars. I'd recommend giving the movie a watch, of course. That's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you have something to add, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. The poster art over here isn't really selling you on the film, is it? It looks more like a VHS cover. I wonder who made that decision.